Hi, welcome to this video. My name is Phil and I'm a senior lecturer in astrophysics at the University of Lincoln. And I want to use this video to basically show you how you can calculate and derive the surface gravity for a planet. Now that's actually kind of the same if it's gonna be a star or some other object. But for the context of this video, we're gonna use a planet and I'm kind of using Earth here actually as an example as well. So what is the surface gravity? Well, it's the gravitational acceleration at a planet's surface. And we're gonna use this variable g to denote the surface gravity as we go through this video. So what we're going to do with to start with is we're going to start with Newton's law of universal gravitation and this is essentially going to be the gravitational force between two objects and we can calculate that if we know things like the masses of the object and the distances between the two objects as well. So we start with this point or this equation here to get our surface gravity. So again, I'm going to use kind of the Earth as an example here and some smaller second object, which I haven't really defined what it is. Maybe it's the moon, maybe it's us standing on the surface. But anyway, F is the gravitational force between these two masses. So we've got the Earth and then a smaller mass. So F is our gravitational force acting between the two objects, which is the same acting on both objects, but just in different directions. So the M's on the right hand side, the red one here is the largest mass and the yellow one is our smallest mass. So if we're gonna use the Earth, then the red M would be the mass of the Earth, and then the yellow one would be some smaller mass, whatever we want that to be, essentially. So R in this equation, so the R squared at the bottom relates to the distance that separates the two objects, the two masses. So depending on how far apart they are, we then put this into our equation as well. So that is important. It's not just their masses, but also how far apart they're separated. And then we have G. Now G is the gravitational constant and I'm giving it this, this um, value here, I suppose actually, using these units. So it's in Newtons, metons, kilograms, but you can get it in, in various different forms as well. What I would say here is if you are doing this calculation yourself is make sure that when you do your calculation, your masses and your radius or your distance between the two objects is in the same units as the gravitational constant that you're using. So if I'm doing the mass of the Earth here, I'd want it to be in kilograms. It's going to be a really big number. Same again with your distance. It's going to have to be in meters unless you change your gravitational constant and the units used for that. So to get the surface gravity then, we can use this equation here. So G on the left hand side there, that's our gravitational acceleration at the surface. We've got the gravitational force, which we just saw on the right hand side at the top, and that's divided by the mass of the smallest object. Now, we already had an equation for F. So the gravitational force, we've got that equation there. So we can actually go in and put that into our surface gravity equation. So if we do that, we should end up with something like this here. So now our surface gravity is essentially equal to the gravitational constant times the two masses, which is then divided by the mass R squared. But we have a the, the smaller masses on the top and the bottom, so they cancel. So we're left with just the gravitational constant times the mass of the larger object, which could basically be the Earth here, divided by the distance separating the two objects, whatever that second object might be and where it is located. So now we've got the surface gravity equation. However, we're calling it surface gravity, but we're just referring to the distance between the two objects. We can actually convert that distance between the two objects to the radius of the planet or the object. So now we're going to replace it with uppercase R, which is going to denote the radius of the planet instead. So now we've got kind of our final equation and this gives us the surface gravity if we know the mass of the large object and the radius of the large object. So for Earth, if we know the mass and we know its radius, we can calculate the surface gravity. And we can do that for all planets as well. If, provided we have its mass and its radius, we can calculate its surface gravity. So for Earth, if we do this here, we do it at the surface, we get a surface gravity of about 9.8 meters per second squared. It's approximately that. And that also can be given in terms of G. So it can be got normalized or normalized or it's given a value of one. 
So 1g would be the gravitational acceleration at the surface for Earth. And that's useful to know because we can then use that as a reference point for maybe other planets or other things. You may, you know, um, in an aeroplane or something, or when you're in a car and you're turning, you get different values of g. And that's kind of what's referring to as well. So it's kind of useful in that context as well. So in our solar system, these objects here, these planets are obviously one moon, all have lower surface gravity than the Earth. And that's because they're, they're smaller or they're kind of bigger. So if you actually have a look at the equation again, the bigger the object is, the lower the surface gravity is going to be, but also the more massive that it is. So yes, Uranus is, is more massive than the Earth, but it's also quite big. So that means that it actually has a lower surface gravity, despite actually being a bigger planet. And the other planets are essentially smaller anyway and lower mass. Now, we could do the same for planets and objects in the solar system that have greater surface gravity than the Earth. And again, note that this is given in terms of G. So you'll note that the Sun has a very high surface gravity. That kind of makes sense, really. It's got a high mass. It's kind of a large object, but it's also a very massive object as well. Jupiter, again, big object, big mass. And then as we get towards kind of Neptune and Saturn, they have quite low density. So despite being large planets, they have quite, well, they're physically quite big and they have quite high masses compared to the Earth. They have quite low density in comparison to the Earth. So it means their surface gravity is quite low for the size of object that they are. And Saturn's almost the same as Earth, although you've got to kind of query where's the surface on these gas giants, where are we defining that? And it's normally to do with like the atmospheric pressure where it's kind of similar to Earth. So we go down to a level where we get similar surface, not surface, but atmospheric pressure. So thank you for watching. And if you enjoy the video, find it helpful, then do consider becoming a member of the channel. There's extra videos in the member section, but it also helps support the channel as well. So thank you for watching.